Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, October 9th. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we praise your name. And once again, Father God, we have the opportunity to spend time in your word, to spend time in prayer. We pray, Father God, that we have an open heart for the message that you have for us and that we take your message to those who are living in darkness today. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. We are in Hosea 7, 1 through 16. Whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephron are exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. They practice deceit. Thieves break into houses. Bandits rob in the streets. But they do not realize that I remember all their evil deeds. Their sins engulf them. They are always before me. They delight the king with their wickedness, the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers, burning like an oven, whose fire the baker need not stir from the kneading of the dough till it rises. On the day of the festival of our king, the princes become inflamed with wine, and he joins hands with the mockers. Their hearts are like an oven. They approach him with intrigue. Their passion smolders all night. In the morning it blazes like a flaming fire. All of them are hot as an oven. They devour the rulers. Older kings fall, and none of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes with the nations. Ephraim is a flat loaf not turned over. Foreigners sap his strength, but he does not realize it. His hair is sprinkled with gray, but he does not notice. Israel's arrogance testifies against him, but despite all this, he does not return to the Lord his God or search for him. Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless, now calling to Egypt, now turning to Assyria. When they go, I will throw my net over them. I will pull them down like the birds in the sky. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. Woe to them, because they have strayed from me. Destruction to them because they have rebelled against me. I long to redeem them, but they speak about me falsely. They do not cry out to me from their hearts, but wail on their beds. They slash themselves, appealing to their gods for grain and new wine, but they turn away from me. I train them and strengthen their arms, but they plot evil against me. They do not turn to the Most High. They are like a faulty bell. Their leaders will fall by the sword, because of their insolent words. For this they will be ridiculed in the land of Egypt. So what all these passages are referring to is that sinful ways entice us when we stray from God and join those who do not know him. In 7 it talks about that they forgot who God is. They forgot what God has done for them. And in 13 it says, but God still wants them back even with all of their sin God still wants them back and in 14 it says they however turn to other gods gods with a lower cast g so what do we need to learn from these particular passages we need to learn to spend more time with our brothers and sisters to keep us on track spend more time in the bible keep us accountable so that we do not turn our backs on God, so that he doesn't have to beg us and beg us and beg us to come back to him. God will always be forgiving us. He will always love us. He is always faithful to us, but let us be faithful to him also. Let us love him also, and let us share him with others continually when we have those opportunities. So we do have to be careful of who we spend our time with. Do we spend time with people who with others who do not know Jesus, who might, might be leading us into a sin that maybe we were part of that sin in the past, but now we have put that behind us. We are followers of Jesus, and we pray to be more Christ-like. So let's continue to have a passion for knowing God. Let's try to be obedient to his word. Let's try to be obedient to his will. Let's try not to stray, not to backslide, and let's try to just be an encouragement to others let others see the love that jesus has for every one of us even when we backslide he still loves us and remind us that when we have friends or family members who maybe they did know jesus but they have fallen away that he's still waiting for them he still loves them he still wants them back into his life so that we can be back 
and spreading the word and sharing him with everyone so that we can all spend eternity with him. And that's why he created us, so that we could spend eternity with him. That's why Jesus took our sin to the cross, so that we can spend eternity with him. And that's why the whole, we have the Holy Spirit, so that we can be, be reminded to be Christ-like, to do our best, to listen for God's voice, to be obedient, and to ask God to be included in his plan, to ask God for wisdom, wisdom with our words and our actions and our thoughts. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that each and every one of us be more aware of maybe the situation that may cause us to backslide, to turn our backs on you. We are thankful, Father God, to know that even when we do backslide, that you are waiting for us, that you still love us, that you have not turned your back on us. We pray, Father God, for the strength and the authority and the power to maintain a relationship with you. We thank you, Father God, for loving us and choosing us. We thank you, Father God, for our brothers and sisters who keep us accountable. We pray, Father God, that this day be filled with your blessings. We pray that this day we have an opportunity to share you with someone. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with blessings. Look for those opportunities that God places in your life. Bye-bye.